Um, high wind ground handling, uh, basically your, your brakes should be thought of as the evil instrument. You know, you, you, can't, you can't hit your brakes. Um, same with landing in a lot of wind. You know, if you're, if you're landing downwind or, uh, you know, you want to be pretty careful with speed bar, you know, if it's, if it's pretty laminar, no problem. But if it's really bumpy, you know, of course, you don't want to have a frontal if you're near the ground. Um, but when you, when you go to touch down, I see this happen all the time. It's just automatic that people hit their brakes. Well, you're just going to turn into a parachute, you know. So you, you've basically got... Um, these days, if you're in a, you know, like pyramidal shaped gliders, if you're in a two liner, it can be pretty hard to manage a wing on your bees. Um, but if you're in a three liner or a nice wing like this, a speed wing or something like that, you know, I want to really encourage ground handling with C's or, or D's if you have D's. Um, not many wings do these days, but you know, you can just happily cruise all over the place on C's. Um, those of you who have seen that Kriegel, that famous Kriegel launch where he's like 40 miles an hour and he just ejects out the back. Um, you know, if it's, if it's really strong, you've got two ways to deal with a lot of wind. You can go with it. As soon as you start bringing up the wing, you, you run. You literally run towards your wing as fast as you can. Or in Kriegels, you know, or you just fly backwards at 40 miles an hour um, and spin out from underneath it. But, you know, or you can hammer your, you know, if you really want to hammer it, you can hammer your C's. If you've got D's, that's, that's killing it a little bit less. But if you want to just really hammer it, just kite it with your C's. Um, so I'll hopefully <laughs> do a good job of demonstrating that uh, with this with the Emily. So um, again, so you can either move towards it or you can you can kite on your C's and D's and don't you don't you don't need your brakes. Um, I'm still a fan of you know old school. Remember we used to learn like you know you you you'd have the brakes in the opposite hands and you'd turn around and you'd re grab your brakes. I don't dig that. You guys you know you still have your brakes in your hand. You're ready to go flying, but. Um, but you're, you're just reaching around the back and, and kiting with the C's and D's or whatever you have. Um, B's, those of you on two liners, it, it is just more tricky, but it can still be done. Um, the other thing is, is understanding the weapon that you have. Um, you know, in, in more wind than a faster high aspect glider is gonna be able to deal with it a little bit better, certainly once you're off the ground, once you've been plucked. Uh, you know, but again, schoolboy errors, are, is your speed system hooked up? That's a pretty good one to have, uh, you know, because so if you get plucked, you're not instantly flying over the back. You know, you've got, make sure your, your, your stuff's ready. Um, one thing I, I see people having trouble with a lot, and, and I'm, I'm one of these people for sure, it can be kind of tricky to get your kit in an, by yourself, to get your kit in a position where you can launch when it's super windy. Um, the best way to do that is typically find a place out of the wind to make sure everything's all good. Um, and I'm one of these people that I, I never unhook my risers from my harness. It, that, that should always just be sorted out. So it can be quite hard to hook up. You know, if it was, if it was quite a bit stronger right now, it'd be hard to deal with the wing and get it to me, um, you know, if, it's, if you're really in a strong position. So it's, it's easier to get back somewhere where it's not so bad and uh, get all that together and then kind of have it rosetted up pretty nicely and then follow what Kriegel did in that thing. You just, you just walk away from it and have it all bunched up. You know, if you start trying to get it out, that's just going to turn into a nightmare, you know. So have it all kind of bunched out and then you can slowly just start tink, 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 build your wall and be ready to, you know, wrap up your, you can just pull in your D's or your brakes or whatever and just wrap it up until you're ready to go. Yeah, I think I think people forget that too. That you know, paragliding should you know you, you want to be athletic. Um, ground handling is about being athletic. You know, think about footy, uh, not my kind of football, not your kind of football. You know, you want to be in athletic positions. You want to be ready. You know, like I'm always like this when I launch or down. You know, like in your seat, in your back. You know, if you're like this, you can't really do too much. But if you're like XE and you get caught in a ton of valley wind or something and you're, you're downwind. So there's, there's a couple of things. First, before you even land, um, I think people get really gripped on the whole like, oh my God, I don't know if I'm gonna make that LZ. I don't know, I'm gonna, uh, and, you're, and, you're, and there's trees or there's power lines or something like that. Like, remember to really open up your scope when, in those kind of situations very early on. Okay, that's my A, that's my B, that's my C, because remember, when there's that kind of wind, you can get a long way by turning and going downwind. 
and you can often get into something better. Where that gets bad is if you're flying more into a Venturi or more buildings or, you know, then you've got to be a little more creative. But with very little height, when there's a lot of wind, you can go a long way downwind. So think about that, you know, try to not put yourself in front of something that, you know, anticipate, okay, I'm going to probably get dragged a little bit here too. But then when you, when it, when it is, when it is time to come down, maybe you're on some speed bar, um, full bar is a little hairy, but you know, some speeds probably going to be a good thing, uh, just to keep from going backwards. And then I'm, you know, you're paying attention to what's going on and you're obviously looking over your shoulder, but my one hand's on my bees. Remember, you're not going to use your brakes ever in this whole anything. So your one hand is on your, whichever way you want to go, doesn't matter, but one hand is on your bees and right now, yank bees and run as far as hard as you can that way. Yeah, sorry, C's if you're on a something else. So, yeah, just one, just one. And because what that's going to do is what he's talking about. It's going to blink it instead of instead of this, where you go ah and get ejected that way. Um, people get hurt in like places like beer all the time because of the tear. You know the the rice patty the terraces. You know. What that does is keeps you from doing that. It puts you in an athletic position immediately. You're running towards that side that's going to die. So you don't want that. Just one, and you run. You got to run. You got to remember that part. You got to go towards it. You know, and it just it just dies. Um, super safe way. I've seen people get out of a lot of wind situations with that. Where you get in trouble is the the brakes. You just eject. You guys remember in the Alaska video, see that, when, you know when I landed in that bush? See all that beautiful terrain around that was all clear? So I thought I had in front of the bush. And, and it was, it's really hard to tell from the film because it was really slopey and it, it was, there was a lot of wind. Um, but you know, had, I, had I identified that, I couldn't see that. I didn't see that bush. I had all this clear and I had all that clear. But I should have made one more little move. You know, you've got more time typically than you than you think. So I was calm and relaxed and I was laughing at Dave. I mean, it wasn't like I was like, oh, but holy shit, you know. Um, but just, that was just, you know, one of those real obvious, like, oh, that was stupid. Um, but yeah, I think it's mostly just this, again, I, I think people get locked. Th this starts closing up when stress hits. And that's the time to force that, force everything out, reverse all that and start thinking about more options. And that whole concept last night we were talking about, about bringing it. You know, um, I, I love this concept. Like, I got this. I got this. I, I got the skills. I've got. I know how to do this. You know, I've I've done the practice. I've done the training. This is no big thing. But, oh, I know what I was going to talk about. The, I think people stop doing this, especially when there's other people around, because they don't want to be embarrassed. Um, this is not a good sport for that. You know, we need to approach this like, uh, you know, you're a little kid and you don't care. You know, you just do it because you're going to make mistakes and that's the only way you learn. And so um, I just want to encourage people to be okay with looking like a fool. You know, it's, that's, re that really goes a long ways. You know, you hear about Kriegel going out and, and doing preposterous things because he wants to learn, you know, that's why he's so good. Uh, he goes out and does that stuff and works at it. And um, so yeah, I think we, you know, when we're first learning, it's all just like, oh, I want to do it. And you're, you're willing to look stupid because you know you're stupid. And then you get a little bit, you get a little bit better. And, uh, and then you don't want to look stupid anymore. So like this, those of you that flown in the Alps and you get, you're, you're flown in the Rhine and the Rhone a lot, you know, famous for really, really strong valley winds. Um, you know, you're up high and you can, I, I'm, I'm looking as, you know, like, oh God. And if it looks really bad, then you know, the first, one of the main things that I see people making mistakes on all the time is then they subject themselves to that. Side, side hill land, land where you are, you know, find a little field on the side of the hill because it's so, so much easier to side hill land than it is to go down into the valley bottom. You know, just, just all that stuff gets worse and worse and worse. So just stay up where you are, you know, and land and wait for a few hours. Don't get in a hurry. Never get in a hurry to land unless you're trying to get out of like QNIM situation or gust front or that kind of thing. But there's situations where you're in those where it's better to stay in the air too. You know, if you've blown it, if it's too late, then land high.
Um, I myself have made that mistake in the Rhone a few times where I could have just landed at some little cafe up top and some little hut and waited it out, you know, or taken the train down. So, you know, like you do not want to have a frontal. That's what's going to happen, right? You're in rotor, you're going to have a frontal. You don't want to have a frontal. You cannot have a frontal. So you want to be thinking about it like, like you're on tow. You know, when it's, it's, you're first on tow and you're getting pulled back, you can imagine that line snaps. I mean, this is a major, you know, it's almost like the wrap and pull. Like, do not be afraid of breaking that glider because it's a much better to come down under, a, under like a deep stall than it is a frontal with all that momentum. Um, know the deep stall point of your glider really well. You know, do enough, enough SIV that you know where that point is. Um, when you get when you get really good, you should be able to almost deep stall your glider into the ground, like come in like a helicopter. You know, and you should really know that fine point before tail slide and before flying. You know, so you can hammer it, let it fly, hammer it, let it fly, and not I'm not talking these kind of flaps. You know, like stall and let it, I mean not so it breaks, but stall point and then let it fly again. Stall point, let it fly again. So then you can just you can literally just be able and then. Those of you that like, you've probably all done this, landed in the middle of the day when it's still really thermic, you know, or, or it starts to, you know, it starts to go Q-nim and it's blowing up on you. It can be, you know how hard it can be to get to the ground? It's just like top landing. You'll hear me talk about top landing later on when we have the, when we have the talk, but you cannot rush it. You know, you, you, there, even in those situations, there are times where it's really booming and there are times where it will mellow out. But, you know, assess before you, you're willing to fly in those kind of days, you should really have get down fast techniques pretty wired, you know? That's not a big ear day. I haven't done big ears in years. I don't even know how to do them anymore. I'm kidding, I do, but you know what I mean? Like, you should know how to spiral like a, you should know a 20 meter down spiral. I'm not talking circles here, you know? I'm talking like wing at the ground, down, get down, and you know, have those, have that in your toolkit before, you know, like, Otherwise, that's maybe, oh, it's blowing up a little bit. Okay, I'm on the ground, as opposed to, oh, maybe I'll see how it goes a little bit farther along, but don't get caught out. Um, a good friend of mine that I fly a lot of acro with has, uh, you know, got all screwed up in a heli and just landed on the side of the hill and in a deep stall. You know, it was, and it, it was fine. Um, it, those of you that listen to the podcast or read my article about throwing my reserve when it wasn't attached to my harness, um, <laughs> And then, uh, and then the second, I, I wasn't used to flying with two reserves and the second one didn't deploy because I was too low at that point. I was probably less than hundred feet. And by the time I got that, you know, the first one was like, I threw it and I, God, these reserves take a really long time. This is amazing. You know, and I was already quite low and I, I looked back and my reserve is just perfectly deployed, just flying away. And I honestly went, that's, that's funny, and uh, and and then and then I was I was wicked twisted twisted up, but I was in a deep stall, uh, and so I was in a you know my, my wing was in a pretty stable configuration, and uh, and my buddy Cody just started screaming at me like, don't let the wing wing fly, don't let the wing fly, yeah, yeah no shit, thanks man, and uh, and and so and then I went oh I've got two reserves like know your equipment right I mean I I I had you know I wasn't an acro guy I wasn't used to flying with two reserves. So, but at this point I was like, this is, uh, this is low, this is ugly. And so I threw that in. It just had, right before I hit the deck, it had just unrolled all the way. It was this perfect little string, you know, so it didn't deploy. But my last thought before I hit was that, okay, stay in deep stall. Like, do, you know, I had both brakes when I went to throw that reserve. Just stay in deep stall and do not stick this landing. You know, just PLF. Just, and it was totally benign. I am kind of a wombat, but I do bounce pretty well. But, um... Yes, yeah, there's a whole lot of lessons behind that one that are obvious. I don't think I need to go into more of that, but uh, you know that 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 deep stall configuration was kind of like coming down under a small lightweight reserve. You know, I mean, I had some tip tucks and stuff, but. <laughs>